can I look at part of the paper while I'm, while I'm just sitting out here, Laura? What are, what are you looking at there? Well, I'm sort of looking for a new car. Oh, you're kidding. That's great. Well, what, not what a new of... car, but a used car. I mean, I could never afford to buy a new car on the salary. What What are you thinking of? What kind of car? A sedan? A sports car? Mm, just Station something wagon? that I, I... I don't know. It's so hard. Well, I might be able to help you. I actually know quite a bit about cars. Really? Yep. These guys, they prey on women, used car salesmen. They... What do they do to us? You ever hear the expression, he's like a used car salesman? Yeah. Well, these are the guys who made that expression possible. God, I never made that connection. You will. They know they can take advantage of women because they don't have the knowledge of the automobile that most men have, including me. How do men get it? I actually got it from uh, my stepmother. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Good story. <laughs> yeah. Armed with that. So what I'm thinking is maybe I can come along and just sort of ask the, some of the right questions and make sure that these guys don't step all over you. Well, like what kind of questions? Well, like um, how much is this car or how much is that car? Hmm. Greg, I'm not doubting you when you say that you're happy all the time. Mm -hmm. But my guess is that underneath that thin veneer of happiness is a man in pain. I could be fooling myself. Let's take a look at it. Okay. Let's get in there and find out if I'm not just kidding myself. I like your attitude. Because you know what I'm all about? No, I don't. Checking it out? Well, you came to the right place, Greg. I'm also all about checking it out. Greg, is that a, what, is that a picture of a, of a toaster that you're holding? Yeah. Hmm. This is the Williams Sonoma stainless steel four slice toaster with the two wide slots that make the natural leap from toast to toasted sandwiches. Yeah, I mean, it looks like an extraordinary machine. You can't make sandwiches in your toaster. No, I know that. You would toast and then put stuff on toast, or then you can put the stuff in the toast and then toast it. Right. So then you would eliminate that whole middle part of having to put it on afterwards. And it sounds great. It's fantastic. Yes, it is. My girlfriend took me to the uh, symphony, which was very nice. I'd never been. Mm -hmm. And they had this uh, soloist come out, and he's playing the cello, right? Right. So he comes out, and he's playing the cello, but he's got long hair, a little bit, a little bit long, and he's staring at the audience a little bit. And he's kind of bopping his head up and down, like he's in Metallica. Like, he would, like you know, my, my thought is, well, excuse me, are you the bad boy of cello? Like, is that what this is? Like, he plays cello, but he's got long hair? Like, you know how whenever there's like a normal group of people, and they have their little normal thing that they do, they have their parameters, and they have their rules, and then there's the rule breaker. Mm-hmm. But he's not a rule breaker. He's just assumed that rule because he's got some shit haircut. You know what I mean? Like that skater, Elvis Perchenko or Perchenko, whatever. Like he's the bad boy of skating, ice skating. You still just do this. You know, that's all it is. It's just jumping in the air. Right. Look, if you rob banks and shoot junk and skate, then you're the bad boy of skating. Otherwise, you're just a guy with a bad haircut. What was it that you wanted to do when you were a kid? I wanted to be a professional football player. Mm -hmm. But uh, I wasn't very good. In fact, uh, I didn't even get past high school. In fact, this is the only compliment I got in four years of high school football. Uh, I was a senior. It was halftime of a game that we were losing. Right. I was a second-string fullback. The first-string fullback, a guy by the name of Ken Flax, was having a bad game. The coach gets us in the locker room. The coach goes, We got a guy out here, number 44, Ken Flax, running like some kind of a pussy. We got guys like Greg Barron here, work hard all week, who will never see the field. Laura's buying a used car, and I offered to help her buy it because it's scary out there for a woman in the uh, used car world. You're going to help her negotiate? That's, that's not your strength, Cass. I'm also going to give her a lift. That is, yeah. that is my strength. Well, I used to do that, you know. What do you mean? You used to sell used cars? Yeah. Really? I did for about six months. Can we do a little uh, role play where I'll walk in and I'll say, uh, hello. Hi there. How are you? I lose. Hi, Dad. Ben? Yeah, hi. Hello. I'm just, just um, going to get something from the cupboard. Well, help yourself. I mean, I'm just... Uh... Yeah, yeah, no, I don't want to get into a big thing about it. All right, I'm just going to get something and I'll go. I'm just, no, you don't have to go anywhere. I'm just reading the paper, that's all. Right, I've noticed you've been reading it for like an hour. I think you made your point. What, that I'm interested in current events? <laughs> Look, I want to clear the air. What, what, what do you mean, clear the air? Why don't you put down the paper and then we can talk, Dad, but instead of ignoring... I wish I knew what you were talking about, because as far uh, as... Yeah, that's funny that you're playing that game. 
No, I really don't know what you're Dad, talking about. you're not helping by making me more mad. We've had fights before, and we've made up before, so let's make up. Okay, what? Well, uh, I'm up. Put the paper down! Hey, Ben, do you think that you and I had a fight? Because the next time we have a fight, I wish you'd let me know. What about the fight we had this morning? I have no idea what you're talking about. I... You, you don't re remember the fight? I don't. Over breakfast. We both sitting, mm -hmm. facing each other. I remember that. Fighting. I don't remember that. You don't remember that. Hey, would it help if I said, Ben, I forgive you? Well, don't just forgive me if you don't know what we were fighting about. I know you remember, and I know you're just saying that, but does the... Hey, Ben, will you lighten up, please? Well, I'm so sorry that I have problems, too, you know? Your patients aren't the only one. Does the Mall of America mean anything to you, Dad? <laughs> what? Yeah. What, uh, help me I out. I see your face. Mall of America. I suggested we go on a vacation. Right. Then you said no, and I don't want to discuss it any further, and you got very curt. I'm sorry if in some way I seem dismissive of the idea. Are you sick of me or something? I'm, or not, you... I'm not sick of you, of you at all. In fact, I, I love spending time with you. Oh, you know, speaking of which, Ben, you know, I know we had talked about going out tomorrow night to a movie or something. Yeah, we had plans. We do. Yeah, I, I actually won't be able to do that because I told Laura I would take her shopping for a card. What, what, what about... Are you okay? I'm, I'm speechless. We're, we're in the middle of uh, trying to have work out a fight. And yeah. then you just tell me, now we have plans tomorrow night, now you're breaking them? Well, I'm starting okay, to do Okay, so fight. let me get this straight. We're not going to the Mall of America together. Right. Now, tomorrow night, which was movie night, you're not taking me to the movies because you're going out with Laura. I wanted to help her buy a used car before I... I, I don't even know who I'm talking to anymore. Ben, check the name tag. What does it say, Dad? Hello, my name is Dad. Yeah. Why do you wear that? <laughs> Where's your name tag, Ben? I gotta get one. You know where you can get them? The Mall of America. That's right. We should go! Okay, you put on this first. These are the, this is your uh, this is your girdle. Hmm. You put your knee pads on these socks that go on the outside. These are old Vancouver Canucks socks. Hmm. These skates are tight. Okay, put on my shoulder pads, and then next, you put on your elbow pads. Now your jersey. Now what's a good thing? Your mouthpiece goes in. Okay, I'm gonna skate around the office a little bit and just check things out. It's almost like you're wearing a coat of armor, and I don't think you need that in here. It defends me from the pucks that people shoot at me. Yeah, Ian, but in here we, we don't use pucks. Dr. Katz? Yeah? I never know when I'm going to get pulled into a game, all right? At least take off the helmet. You sound like my mom. So, Ian, you're not an only child. I have a sister, Dr. Katz, and she's a figure skater. She's really a figure skater? No. So you guys are close in age. Um, I'm six years older than her. That's close, isn't it? Yeah. So the kind of familial closeness that you knew as a child, I'm sure you miss that living in the city now. Yeah. When I first moved to the city, I stayed with a friend who had a dog that had a crush on me. Mm -hmm. I was sitting on the couch one day, and he actually mounted my shoulder. It wasn't so bad that he was having his way with my shoulder, but he wouldn't look at me while he was doing it. That hurts. So, Ian, do you want to be involved with a woman in a serious relationship? I want to get married one day. I want to marry a girl that's already got a kid. That way when that kid asks me a question I can't answer, I can look at that kid and say, Go ask your dad, you little bastard. Well, I was curious when my dad told me last night that you were going to buy a car, and, and, and he said he was going to go along. Yeah. I, I kind of laughed, had a sip of my tea, <laughs> leaned back, thought about it, and uh, said, I should go with you because I happen to be familiar with the used car market. Well, how was that? Number one, I read the used car section of the paper every day. Well, what information can you get from that? Number two, I know a little bit about cars because I, uh, well, I see them all the time. Hmm. Well, have you thought about what kind of car you want, or have you, is this... You know, low miles, no rust. How much money, like, let's say, are we talking over three or under three? About three. So are we talking about a hard three, or are we talking about, well, you can do 3700 What did I just say? You didn't say anything. I said three. Well, I mean, we're running into problems already. <laughs> because let's say I got something for 33 Is that going to stop you from buying it? Yes. It is? Yes. Okay, see, that's stupid. Because <sighs> I have something here, a beautiful car for 42 I mean, I know it's $1,200 more. And, I mean, what's the difference? Three, 42 I mean, you're, gonna, you're, you're, about, you're getting a better deal. Are you with me? No, not at all. I got to be honest with you. I, I'm not going to sell you a car for 3 I and mean, I'm not going to do it. Okay, then I'll, I mean, I I'll go somewhere else. No, 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 
Matan. Okay, well, thank you I, very it's much. It's beyond my, my comprehension to sell you a $3,000 car. It doesn't make any sense for anybody involved. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to your old boyfriend here. Who's wandering around aimlessly. Who, who is this guy? Get, get out of here. You know what? I'm not selling you a car. Your old friend, get out. You're done. I'm done with you. I'll sell you a $3,000 car, lady, huh? Woo! What's up, Ben? Hey, Todd. Ah, I gotta tell you this, man. I gotta tell you this. What? What? We're gonna be having a big sale on previously viewed movies. 50% off. It starts Saturday morning, 9 o'clock. But special customers like you? Come here at 8 o'clock. What? 8 o'clock. At, at 8? Come here at 8 o'clock, special customer. So you're having a sale of... Shh. Yeah, man. Fifty percent off previously viewed movies. What does previously viewed movies mean? All of these movies are previously viewed. They're rentals. Start Saturday morning at nine. What is wrong with you? But you're a special customer. You can come in at eight. I honestly don't like the, the whole idea of previously viewed stuff. That they're that's dirty. We washed all of them. You wash the videos? Doesn't that ruin them? No, the cases. Oh. Not the video. I do have a thing about touching the used videos. Dude, you've touched more than I have. No, I, I, I actually don't touch them. What, do you use tongs or something? I have my video gloves. No, this, this is like a Petri dish in here. This, everybody comes in and out. You don't know who's renting videos. Yeah. You know, I got to be honest with you. Like, the third week I came here, I don't think you were working here. Uh-huh. I got a fungus. But you've been seeing the therapist. Right. And she referred you to me, which I appreciate. Yeah. Why did you stop seeing her? Well, I found myself being coming to it. I was very attracted to her. Well, that's a conflict, Greg. I found myself em embarrassed in front of her. But I'm not embarrassed in front of you at all. So I guess I don't have a crush on you. Well, give it time. Well, let's try to focus on the real issue, which I think is this rage that you've been telling me about. Are, you ever get mad at your house and you want to break something, but you can't because you own it? Like you're mad and you pick up a plate and you go, come on, and then you go, oh, shit. You know, because it's part of a set or it's fiesta wear. I understand the feeling. Not a problem for my friend Axel Rose of Guns N' Roses, who, while mad at his house, relieved a little tension by pushing his white baby grand piano through the plate glass windows in his house and into his pool. Whoosh! How good do you think that felt? Hmm. Mighty good. I will never be able to do that. I don't even have a piano. My parents have one. I'm not allowed in that room when I'm 35. Huh. The best I could hope to do is, like, throw a harmonica in the sink. Ugh. What's with um, mints lately? Have you noticed whenever you go out now to buy mints, there's all these different mints, and then they, it seems like they're in this weird competition to be strong? Right. You know what I mean? It's like, mints aren't supposed to make you cry. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to put a mint in your mouth and go, Oh, God, get it out! Get it out, please! You know what I mean? I mean, and it seems like the smaller they are, then the more strong they are. Because you go, well, do you want a mint? And then I go, no, I think I'm just I'm too weak to have fresh breath. So how did the negotiating go? Well, I think for him it went okay. You know, mind you, I was not the car of my choice. These guys, they, they, they know how to play this game so well. Well, maybe I should go talk to the guy, Dad, and you okay. can borrow away here. You know, I think this car pretty much has everything I need. I am bored. And I thought this was going to be fun. Let's take this one for a drive. Dad, put the key in the ignition and let's get going, okay? Hey, how do you get this thing into uh, second gear? Dad, you got to start the car. I know, but to get into reverse, you shift to the right. Do you know how then, to drive a stick then, shift, Dad? Uh, I do, and then you go down, you push down, well, what? and then First back. Who are you well, telling? I'm reminding myself. Hey, hello. I'm back here. Yeah, I know, but I haven't driven a, a stick in about well, 15 years. don't get excited. Years. Just let's push go. over. Come on, let's go. No, I just don't want to get... Dad. Yes, I hear you. Calm down. <sighs> Laura, switch. You drive. Dad, get in the passenger seat. I'll stay back here. At least let me get us off the lot, because then I can tell you how the car handles. Why are you yelling? <sighs> Here, here's some old chicken nuggets on the floor. Those come with it? I guess. It's got the honey mustard sauce. Oh. Pass them. This would be a good time to downshift. You, if you want to get off at this next exit, you might want to consider downshifting here. Guys, turn on the tunes. <laughs> Let's get it going. I brought tapes. You might want to pop it into fourth gear now. You don't even know how to drive this car. Ben Mix 98. Some of these cars aren't designed to go over 40 miles an hour in third gear. And uh, one's called Soul Ben. <laughs> well, I'm not in third gear. I'm in overdrive. Laura. That's reverse, Laura. Laura. Ben, what? Radio. Get some tunes going. 
I want to be able to hear the car, see if it's making any funny noises. Laura, watch the left. Ben, stop looking at yourself in the rearview mirror. Well, I gotta get a good, just get a feel for what I look like back here. Because I'm using that to see out the back window. Laura, don't panic. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm trying to focus on this car and driving, and you guys are just being really annoying. Uh, Laura, do you have any idea where we are? Sort of. Oh, great. We're lost. You know, I know a couple great car games. Oh, uh, what about I'm going on a picnic? I don't know that game. Wait, what? What was that? What? That sound? There's something stuck under the car. I think it's the bottom of the car scraping against the pavement. No, why don't we just bring it back to the dealership now and... Can you please just look? Oh, I'm not getting out in this neighborhood. Dr. Katz, you're going to have to get out to let him out. Just come out here for one, one well, second. up. I can't get out of here. You can just release right. that, pull that thing and release... Ben, don't force it. I'm trying to get out, Laura. Oh, my God. Laura, he's wedged in there. No, I can't breathe. Push here. up your seat, Dad. It won't go up any further. Jesus. Laura, you might have to get out, too. Pull on my arm. I got it. Dad. Oh, God. Uh. Oh, sweet release. Okay, uh. thanks a lot, you guys. Laura. Hey, Laura. Wh- Laura. Laura. Ben, she, she's just kidding. I'm sure she'll be right back. Seems to be uh, emitting a lot of exhaust. Where are we, exactly? I don't know. I know that I think there's a Taco Bell within walking distance, so I'm not that worried. Let's hit it. Okay. Well, I, I I'm glad that's over. I didn't realize it's illegal to hitchhike there. I thought we had a nice time. I think I handled the state trooper very well. But, you know, I'm glad we had a night together. It was a chance for us to spend some time together in the breakdown lane. You know, we don't get enough time together to bond. Yeah. You know, even though we didn't say much. I think just celebrating our collective fear of the unknown was was a bonding experience. You know, it does not look good in a bad neighborhood. An old man and a young man hugging for five minutes straight. I think I'm a middle-aged man. I'll tell you, buying a car is not easy. I... I take it back. Because it's a game with these guys. Yeah, it's a game I, I never want to play again. No, it's not fun. You know who really handled it poorly? Laura. No, you. That was my next guess. Well, you did talk to the guy. I mean, I heard you, and y- you got him to go up $200, which was a sweet piece of negotiating on your part, Dad. Well, because he didn't realize that there were side airbags. Well, it was nice to mention features that he didn't know about. I, don't, I didn't want to rip the guy off. You were being very honest. And I don't think it hurt. Well, it certainly didn't hurt us. No. Or the car salesman. Nope. The only person it hurt was Laura. But that's not our problem, Ben. I guess you're right. Because I offered to help her buy a car, and she rejected my offer. Well, you did help her buy a car. Just the wrong car for the wrong price. Yeah. I think we learned a lesson last night. Which is? We should go to the Mall of America together. Ben, I thought we were going to back off of that issue. What if we do this? Okay. We don't go to the Mall of America. Okay. What if we just go to the mall, just you and I, for two weeks? <laughs> call me an old softy, but it's starting to sound pretty good. All right, you're an ass. No, I said call me an old softy. Just once. You're going to make me say it. Here's 20 bucks. Call me an old softy. You're an old softy. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Come here. You Get over here. <laughs> Boom. You first. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> oh, Dad, we need a vacation, <laughs> don't we? There's a new gap in the mall, and from that gap, you can see the Banana Republic. And makes almost makes you feel like you're in Europe. I swear to God. Mount Rushmore, you ever been there, Dr. Katz? Been there? No. It's a crap. Huh. It's a bunch of heads carved on the side of the mountain. Right, I've seen I've seen pictures. No hookers, no gambling. Well, it's not that kind of place. A lot of old people love the heads carved on the side of the mountain. That's where they go before they die. I'm standing next to this one old lady and I go, uh, so uh lightning did this? I actually plucked a nose hair once. Have you ever done that, Dr. Katz, before? Yes, I have. That's no fun. No, it's painful. Oh, man. I couldn't believe the pain. I was like, la, 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 blink. Ah! My eyes started to water. My knees buckled. I hit the head on the sink. Woke up seven hours later. Four more hairs hanging out of my nose. I have this apartment in Los Angeles that I like, but I have um, ants. You know how, like, whenever you see ants, they're always going in a line because they got to get the thing or whatever it is that they do. Mm. It's got to suck being an ant because, obviously, you know, there's somebody back at the hole that goes, go get the thing! And then they come right back. 
Do they go around? No. Do they take a break? No. Well, I think they have a sense of urgency. So I was fascinated by these ants in my apartment because they weren't like that. They weren't in a line going to get the thing. They were by themselves in different parts of my apartment. Like there was one over by the clock and there was one walking across the bed and two walking side by side like they're having a chat. Mm -hmm. And I go, wait a minute. These ants aren't like other ants. These ants are self-actualized. Maybe these ants came out of the hole and went, screw you. Right. And then I, I loved them. I thought, wait a minute. These ants, they're like having a, an uprising in my bedroom. They're, they're the, and I start calling them the freedom ants, you know? Mm. And I couldn't kill them, but I loved them. And they were everywhere. You know what I mean? But they inspire me to be my own man. I went out and quit my job. I don't care. Really? Then I come home and six of them are eating a piece of soap. Now, I don't know a lot about ants, but I know this. They're not supposed to eat soap. Right. There's no property in soap that they need back at the hole. And then I realized I've been duped. These aren't freedom ants. These ants are just dumb. They can't even form a line. They don't even know what the thing is. They're just walking around going, I don't know. Try the soap. Then I'm mad and I'm pissed. And I'm going, hey, what are you doing? You're eating soap. You must have been devastated. Greg, you know what the music means. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>